Daniel's quick start to C programming. Lesson 1. What is C and what is this C++ thingy? What is Objective C and what the heck is C Sharp? To put it in simple terms, C is a programming language. It was created at Bell Labs in 1969 by Dennis Ritchie, who, it must be said, did more for modern technology than Bill Gates and Steve Jobs combined, though he's far less known. Without C, systems like Unix, Linux, Windows and Mac simply couldn't exist in the way we know them today. Each of these operating systems were created using C or one of its successors. Amusingly, there was a language called B, but there was never a language called A. B was initially chosen because of the name Bell, B for Bell, get it? Then along came C, its successor. However, there is no D or E. From C onwards, its successors were named using different naming conventions. But a little more about C. Simply put, C is used to write software. C is a very small language and can be mastered in a few months, not just learned, but mastered. When using C, you need never ever encounter a line of code you don't understand. C is also cross-platform compatible. This means, once you know it, you can write for almost every computer on the planet. You don't even necessarily need an operating system because C can be used to write operating systems. C is ideal for writing software that runs quickly and doesn't use much memory. This means it's often used to write things like keyboard drivers, monitor drivers and other system devices. In 1979, C++ was developed by a Danish developer with such an amazing name that I'm not even going to attempt to pronounce it here. It's a really fun name that you should always make your friends say five times fast in any drinking game. C++ was originally called C with classes. It was later renamed C++, and the double plus is shorthand for adding one in programming, so C++ means one up from C. He could have called it D, but because it was so closely related to C, the developer decided to call it C++ instead. C++ took a once small language which you could master in a few months, and added a ton of new features. These features were designed to make programming more efficient, and to give developers more options. C++ moved on from C in that it supported object-oriented programming. The basic concept behind OOP is that all your code is arranged in little bundles of data, events and triggers, rather than being spread all out in a jumble. OOP makes it easier to write complex programs. Most of Windows is written in C++, which is a very big complicated program indeed. It must be said that C++ has a little more overhead in terms of memory usage and file size. It is the most popular programming language behind C and Java. It is also impossible to master. While C could be mastered in a few months, C++ probably can't be mastered even with a lifetime of study. Objective-C was created by Brad Cox and Tim Love in 1983 at their company Stepstone. It has become the popular driving force behind Mac OS and iPhone apps. It is another superset of the C language. It can do everything C can, but has a few extra features bolted on. The features are pulled from a language called Smalltalk, and like C++, it is focused on making C an object-orientated language. C Sharp was invented by Microsoft in 2001 and intended to be another object-orientated language, just like C++ and Objective-C. However, unlike C++ and Objective-C, it isn't actually based on C. It was designed to be C-like, but in the end the two languages didn't have much in common. C Sharp was originally codenamed Cool, but Microsoft decided to call it C Sharp instead. What is a program? A program is a predefined set of events that must be followed to the letter. When we deviate from the program, anything can happen. Chaos consumes us all, and nothing does anything it's supposed to, a bit like a 1980s VCR. As budding programmers, it is your sworn duty to stand in front of chaos and all its horrors, and then proceed to beat it with a stick until it's ready to do what you tell it to. Computers can't deal with chaos in the way that humans can. It's not bright enough to pick up a stick and start beating it until it does what it's supposed to. In fact, computers are so supremely stupid that they literally cannot do anything unless specifically told to. 
When left to their own devices, they do just nothing. They sit there feasting on your hard-earned money as they drag your electricity bills through the seven realms of hell. So, to prevent this from happening, we explain to the computer exactly what it should do, by putting together a list of things it should do. This is what we call a program. Your computer either gets with the program, or it goes back to the shop for a refund. What is programming? What is source code? What is coding? What is compiling? Don't even talk to me about linking. Programming is the act of putting together a television series. That is, if you take the dictionary definition. But if you look a bit further down that dictionary, you'll also find out that programming is the process of writing computer programs. But seasoned developers also like to mess with newbies' heads, so we also call it coding. It can be argued that while the word coding does have a great deal of relevance when looking at pure machine code, which resembles less language and more a string of random and completely nonsensical numbers, programming languages, on the other hand, are not series of random numbers, but are in fact very specific languages designed to explain to your computer in no uncertain terms what the hell it is supposed to do with your electricity supply. When using a programming language like C, then coding as a word makes a lot less sense. But professional programmers like confusing words like coding because it makes us all sound much more important and mysterious. This is something you'll find common to most professional industries. But what is source code? Source code is the fancy term for a text file. Yeah, it's no more complicated than that. It's just a file of text that sits on your hard drive. Once written, we use the mysterious and magical word compiler, which converts our text file into something the computer understands natively. A bit like a foreign language translator. Once the source code has been compiled, it is then linked. Linking is the act of taking a file created by the compiler and turning it into something our PC can run. On a Windows PC, this is anything with a .exe after its name. Technically, you can also execute .com files and .bat files, but we'll pretend that's not true for now because hardly anyone ever uses those anymore, at least not on purpose. So, how do I do this coding thingy? To code, or program, you need a special kind of text editor. One with a compiler built into it and ready to go. OK, sure. You could take the complicated route and write your program in Notepad and then compile it manually using the right tools, but who the hell wants to do that? That's just showing off, and we're nowhere near clever enough to show off just yet. So we'll leave that stuff for later. You know, when we need to brag at programming parties and point out to non-techies how supremely uninformed they are to make up for not having Natasha Davis from your comprehensive school clig into your arm. Er, uh, don't ask. So yeah, back to the point, to start programming, or coding, which are the same thing, you need to install an IDE. In the next video, I will show you how to install this mysterious IDE, and what to do, and what not to do, and what you might want to do, what you can't do, and what is physically impossible even if Natasha Davis does ask you to do it.